Probability and Counting by Justin D'Souza. The learning objectives of this lesson are to describe events as subset of sample spaces by using intersection and unions and to describe events as subset of sample spaces by using complements. Mainly about intersection, union and complements. We will look into that all the three types in this lesson. The keywords are intersection of A and B, union of A and B and complement of A or complement of B. Now, intersections. Let's look into the Venn diagram over here. See, this is a Venn diagram of A. This is the Venn diagram of B. If you're thinking, what is a Venn diagram? It's just a diagram which shows characteristic of uh, event A and B. Now, if the two diagrams are overlapping, you can see this part is overlapping. That means that part of A and B are common over here. They're overlapping. So this is called the intersection, basically. Now, here... If there is something in A and B, say now 1, 2, 3 is in A and 3, 4, 5 is in B, then you can see 3 will be the overlapping section, that is the intersection. And now, here the formula for that is basically, if you want to find the probability of A intersection B, it's basically the number of outcomes in both, that's overlapping of A and B, divided by the total possible outcomes. When we look into a problem, it will be much clearer, but before that, here we can also find a union. Union is basically opposite of intersection. Sorry, not exactly opposite of intersection. Now we here, uh, the formula is given of all the things, all possibilities. So intersection is overlapping. Um, union would be everything. I told opposite of intersection, that is wrong. I, I stand corrected. It is basically if you have anything in A and B, you don't write the overlapping once again. You just write all the terms which we'll also see in the problem and it'll be more clear. But before we go there, I just want to say this. If there is A over here and there is B over here, if you add A and B, the intersection part is overlapped two times, isn't it? Once over here and over here. So there are two intersections. So what we do is we remove the intersection once. So it'll be A and B. The intersection overlapping is removed once. So we will just get A union B. Let's look into this example. A fair die is rolled once. A fair die will have six total possibilities. Let A be the event of rolling an odd number and let B be the event of rolling number greater than three. So let's write A can be denoted as the odd number. So it's one, three and five because total is six. We can't exceed more than six. Now we just write A equals flower back brackets and then write all the possibilities of set A. And now what is B? B is the event of rolling numbers greater than 3. So it is more, more than 3, 4, 5 or 6. Now look at what is intersecting over here. This is not common. 3 is also not common. 5 is common here. So A intersection B which is common in both is only 5. So that is the answer. This is 5. So that's it. Here, A intersection B is 5. You can just do it in mind, but it's if it's in writing, you need to write it out. The event A, the event B, and then write A intersection B, 5. Now, please do try this by yourselves and then continue the video. Now, if you're solving this, let's first read the problem. A is the event of the spinner landing on blue. There is two blue sections, that is 7 and 15, any one of them. So, over here, A would be 7 and 15. Now, what about the next one? Let B be the event of spinner landing on a section that is with the number divisible by 3. That means basically multiples of 3. Three Divisible by 3 means whenever you divide by 3, it must be a whole number. Or in other words, multiples of 3, 6, all the multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12 and so on. Okay, only 15 is the maximum. So these are the multiples. There's one 3 here, 9 here. And 15. So there are three multiples. Which is the missing multiple? It's 9 here. And now which is the intersection? 15 and 15. There's no other intersecting, no common term. So it's 15. That is the intersection. The example 2 is about a card problem. A card is selected from a standard deck of cards. What is the probability that the card is a queen and is red? Now let us just go back to the problem. Here we had just find, found intersections. Finding intersections, there is no probability involved. Now we are dealing with probability. A card is picked from a standard deck. What is the probability that the 
card is red and queen. It's an intersection problem. Queen and red. You know, both are possible. Both are required here. So now if we know about cards, we have a picture over here. Now look at these cards. So there are two, four suits. That is the spades, the clovers, the clubs, or the diamonds, or the huttons. Now here, each set, each set has 13 cards. Okay? And the total cards are 52. So the jokers are not added in the cards. So 52 is only the number cards and the picture cards without the joker. Now here what happens is we need the queen. So how many queens are there in total? There are four queens, two are black queens, two are red queens. Now here, if you are talking about queen, there is, see the intersection of A, all the four are there. But what is the next one? The card is red. So out of 52, 26 are red cards. But there are two red queens. So this is the intersecting part. Two possibilities only, right? So now we need probability. We saw the probability formula is the desired outcome divided by the total outcome. The total is all the 52 possibilities, the 52 cards. So that is the answer. You can put in the calculator and solve it up. It will be very less person. So you can see that's the formula. Number of outcomes of A intersection B. That is what we desire. And the total possible outcome is 52. 2 by 52, it's 1 by 26 or 3.8 person. Now just imagine by yourself, you have a standard deck of, your, uh, of the cards, you shuffle it and you just pick a ra card randomly. I'm sure it's not always going to be a queen and it's a red color, you know, it can be any color, any card. So if you're just taking, say, for example, red card, any red card, yes, 50% of the time you will get a red card. But to get a queen which is red, only 3.8% chances, you know. So this is about that, this problem. Now let's look into the next problem. A fair die is rolled once. Let A be the event of rolling a number less than 5. So let's write it out. A is less than 5. So it will be 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now what is B over here? B is an event which is multiple of 2. So multiple of 2 means 2, 4 and 6. Now look here, they have asked union. Union is basically all of this. So you can write it in terms of formula, finding A, intersection B and all that. But the easier way to understand is, write all of this, but if it's intersecting, only write it once. You can see this 2 is intersecting and there is 4 and 4. Only write it once. So 1, 2 only once, 3, 4 and 6. This would be A union B. Union is all of them together. So you can see the answer would be 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6. Only thing is intersecting numbers only written once. Now here we had the similar problem but now it's not intersection, it's union. So please do try this by yourselves by pausing the video. If you have tried well and good, if you could find the answer, great. If you did not and if you are confused now, let's solve it up together. See, here A is again, spinner landing on the blue section. It's 7 and 15. So the other number is 15. What was B? B was a number that is divisible by 3 or multiples of 3. It will be 3. 5 is not divisible. 3 is not divisible. Whereas 9, yes, is divisible. So 9 and 15. And so union would be, if we generally write this in ascending order. So it's 3, 7, 9 and 15 is the last number. This is the A union B. Now we will go to the compliments. But before that, a quick reminder, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. I know many of you guys have subscribed. Thank you so much. Please do support me by liking my videos and sharing it with your friends who might find it helpful. If you have benefited, please pass along. Thank you, guys. Now, coming to the compliments. Here, compliment is something that is not included in a certain thing. Say for example, complement of A. Now this is the set A over here. Let me just share it. So only A would be this part. Now this is A intersection B. So over here. Now what is A dash? A dash is basically the complement which A is not involved. Yes, you might be thinking, oh yeah, this is the one, right? Now, even the outside region is also A dash, okay, whichever is not included. So that is about A dash. Now, here there is a simple way. 
see where they have given example the probability of rolling die and getting a 3 so out of 6 there is only one option of 3 so the probability is only 1 by 6 but what is the probability of not getting a 3 so not getting a 3 means you can get 1 2 4 5 and 6 right so basically if you don't want 3 it is 1 2 4 5 and 6 other than 3 so there are 5 possibilities so you can get the answer as 5 by 6 whereas getting a 3 is 1 by 6 but there is a simple relation over here the relation is to you know to find the probability uh, complements probability just to 1 minus probability of that certain event that would be p dash of a p dash would mean complement so if you don't want that particular thing just do 1 minus that particular thing we will now uh, see a problem we'll understand much better this is the formula basically here there's a problem Panju subscribes to a movie streaming service for movie night he is going to let the program randomly pick a movie from his list of favorites what is the probability that a comedy movie will not be chosen look over here they have told not be chosen that means it's a compliment now you have so many options right so if you want to do no other than comedy that means complement of comedy you need to add all these and the, then divide by the total possibility but instead of that we can easily do one minus probability of comedy movie so first let's find the probability of comedy movie then we can find p dash of c okay easily so what is the probability of getting a comedy movie so probability of getting a comedy movie is 112 by because 112 comedy movies are there and sum of all this now we need to add them all you can just put in the calculator and add it but just uh, look at the sum you should just add them okay the total movies are 350 okay i'll just take it over here so the total movies are 350 if you add them all up you should get 350 so this is the probability of comedy movies now if you don't want comedy movies now whatever the what is the probability of not getting a comedy movie that is the complement of comedy movie so it'll be 1 minus 112 by 350 that's it if you put this in the calculator you will get the answer so just type this out you'll get the answer so it is 17 by 25 or it is 68 percent now please do remember when you put 17 by 25 obviously the uh, numerator is small than the denominator you should get a decimal 0 point something it'll be 0 0.68 how do you get percent is just multiply this by 100 you will get 68 percent okay you just round it out and this is the answer it is 17 by 25 is 0 0.68 then we convert to person by multiplying by 100 so 7 by 25 means 68 percent chances that the uh, comedy movie will not be randomly chosen now the check problem over here again about compliments let's look at this it's about raffle tickets uh, harvest fair harvest fair sold 967 raffle tickets for a chance to win a new tv copy and complete the table to find each probability of not winning a tv given the number of tickets so you have raffle tickets right so the more the number of tickets the more chances you have to win you know so here if you have bought 20 tickets the total number of tickets are 967 so let's find what is the probability of winning if you have 20 tickets the probability of winning over here would be 20 by 967 because you have chosen you have bought 20 tickets and there are total of 967 tickets right so this is the probability now this is the probability of winning but you want the probability of not winning not winning is clearly mentioned here so what you need to do is whatever this probability is there let me just uh, clear it out over here 1 minus 20 by 967 is the answer or you can do 20 by 967 and then do it 1 minus it's the same thing here if you just do 1 minus 200 by 967 that is the probability of not winning over here same thing 1 minus 100 and 967 and lastly 1 minus 100 by 967 let's use a calculators and i'll solve it i'll just show you from decimal to percent as well here all you need to do is 1 minus use the fraction symbol it's 20 divided by the total number of tickets 
because they have already mentioned. Now, just don't add this over here. If you're going to add it, you will get 321, which is not the total amount. The total amount of uh, tickets sold is clearly mentioned 967. Now, if you press equal to unsolved, it is 97.9%. The first one over here won't be winning. 97.9 is almost 98, so it's rounded out. So if you're thinking how, you can just multiply this whole thing by 100 to directly get the person, but you'll have decimal first. So I'll just multiply by 100. Now you can see this is in terms of person, 97.9. Now here, if you just keep on adding, you know, changing the top value, you can easily get the other values. 200 is basically 79.3%, 79% and so on. Now this one ticket out of 9967 9, means it's, Basically, 99.9% .9 is not going to win, you know. We'll just check that out. So, over here, let's take out every. Let's check the 100 first. It should be 89.67, the 89, 90% maybe over here. And lastly, the 1. See here, it's 99.89, 99.9% of not winning. You can see these are the probabilities. Now here you can see as less tickets you have, the chances of not winning is very, very high. Whereas the 200 tickets means 78%. So the highest probability of winning is this over here if you have 200 tickets. That's how we solve this problem. And that's the end of this lesson. It's a short lesson, an easy lesson. I hope it is clear. I hope these videos are helpful. Please do share my videos with your friends. Please do like the video if you have found it helpful. And if you're not yet subscribed, please do subscribe. If you're thinking why I keep on telling subscribe to my channel, because more than 90% of the viewers of my channel are not subscribed. But as long as you're finding it helpful and beneficial, that is more than enough. I wish you all happy learning. And until the next video, take care and see you soon.